Hello, YTPC. Ethan, Parsimonious Piper here. Today I've got Matthew, Glum Chum Piper. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. So what are you smoking today? I'm smoking Peterson's My Mixture 965 in a Sherlock, Peterson Sherlock. Very nice. I have got uh, some more of that uh, Appalachian Sunrise that I got from Killer Briar 626. And it is in a big Savinelli billiard, uh, one of their uh, Brouillet line that I got from uh, Sue Dunhill. And a good blend and, and a wonderful, wonderful pipe. Just fantastic. So let's get started. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, where you live. Um, I've, um, I've promised not to hold your family connections against you? Well, um, I'm from Wake Forest, North Carolina. Been in the grocery business for just turned 12 years. And as most of you probably might know, Curmudgeon Piper is my stepdad. Yeah, like I said, we, we won't hold that against you. So tell us, how long have you been smoking a pipe? Well, uh, I'm going to have to take y'all back a few years. Uh, first smoking experience I had was a cigar, July 4th, 2008. Um, smoked cigar here and there. Didn't pick up a pipe till around 2010, 11, somewhere around there. And wasn't really that heavily into it at the time. But... Uh, over time, uh, kind of delve deeper into it. So what, what really got you interested in pipes versus cigars? Um, well, Doug back, back years ago when he started smoking a pipe, um, he, he was smoking cherry blends and all that and I just thought pipes were were cool uh, I love the smell of a cherry blend and so Doug had a big big influence on my love for the hobby okay now you mentioned cherry blends uh let, let's talk blends what did you uh what did you start out smoking I, well, yeah, I, my first blend I ever smoked was a blend, house blend from the tender box called Cherry Almond. And I also smoked uh, Smoker Friendly's blend, their cherry blend. And those were the two that started, started me. Now, I have not had either one of those. Are, are, they, are, are they wet, goopy aromatics or, or pretty decent? Um, the tender box one is pretty well uh dried out for the most part it's not that moist the smoker friendly friendly one is maybe a tad goopy but it's not a bad smoke okay yeah i, I said i i haven't tried either one of those my um my wife pretty much only likes cherry blends in terms of the room note so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always on the hunt for something that she can tolerate and and i can stand smoking yeah, you have to give one of those a try. Well, a lot of us get started on aromatics. What are you smoking now? What What are your favorite blends or types of blends? Um, I'll smoke anything. I'll give anything a shot. But I mainly smoke English and Virginia blends. Uh, haven't had. I've had a handful of each of the genres of tobacco. My favorite English now is the 965. I love the, there's not, the light of key is not at the forefront, mm -hmm. um, but the, I think it's the brown Cavendish in it that I, that really makes the blend that I really like. Yeah. Virginia is I've had Union Square by GLPs, uh, Stockton. Actually, the first two Virginia blends I had were University Full, uh, University Flake and uh, Sherlock Holmes by Peterson. 
Now, have you tried any of the um, the really dark uh, Virginia tobaccos like the black or brown Irish twist yet? Not yet. Not yet. We'll have to we'll have to remedy that. <laughs> we'll fix you up. I, I used to say I didn't like Virginias until I tried those. And well, it turns out I just don't like the light grassy hay or honey type Virginias. I do like the really dark stuff. Um, and yeah. th th those ones are both their they're tops on my list. So we'll, we'll have to see if we can set you up with some there. All right. But yeah, that that 965 that 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 is definitely good stuff. Yes, it is. And I'm just waiting for Peterson to say, hey, we're releasing a 1938. Uh, that would be that would be awesome. We did that. Yeah, if they could revive that one. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, well, weren't you did you get a 10 or were you hunting for that there at the, the Richmond show? Uh, wasn't hunting for it, but I went to a table and the 50 ounce tins were 20 bucks, 100 gram or 100 gram tins were $40. And he only, the guy only had one. And uh, I've only had one bowl out of that whole tin. I gave the other half to Doug and the other half of that tin is going to Shaky. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I just I thought I remembered you either looking for it or buying it or something when, when we were up there. Yeah, that that's one that I, I have not tried any of the old Dunhill uh, versions of anything. Uh, everything I've got's been uh, the newer Peterson. Well, we talked tobaccos. How about pipes? Um, you've been around this quite a while. Do you have a favorite shape or favorite maker? Uh, folks we had some technical difficulties there my isp just bounced me so let's jump back into this i was just asking uh, you've been around this for 10 years whether you have got a uh, favorite pipe shape or manufacturer favorite carver that kind of thing um my favorite brand uh, <clears throat> would have to be peterson um i like this calabash i guess you'd call it dublin shape it just fits comfortably in the mouth comfortable to hold p-lip doesn't give you any uh tongue bite just a smooth cool smoke the artisan pipes i like the stuff simon at lcs priors puts out um he's a very talented uh individual also the asikian pipes are mm -hmm. very beautiful pipes as well yeah, the level of detail on those that I've seen uh, uh, your dad and Charlie Boca de Boynton posted some some good close ups. The level of detail on those is really, really pretty incredible. Uh, mm -hmm. they are. But yeah, I think Simon is approaching his 500th pipe, I think now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, close to it. And uh, yeah, some some absolutely very, very creative stuff. YTPC, how did you how did you find the YTPC? What got you what got you into watching videos and and what made you get on this side of the camera? Well, uh, have to go back a few years for that. When I first started smoking a pipe, of course, I'm, as many people might have done, I go to YouTube and look up how to pack your bowl so it doesn't clog up or anything like that. And, I come across a couple channels, three channels actually. Uh, Tom, Northwest Pipe Smoker. John Harden's channel matches 860. And Chris, Mutton Chop Piper. And those were the three that I mainly watched. And I saw a, a few other people had some videos out there, but I didn't really delve that deep into it. Didn't know it was called YTPC at the time. Mm -hmm. um, Fast forward a few years to this year, and I was at my parents' house, and mom was watching something on her phone. I said, what you watching? She said, oh, one of Doug's videos. And I said, oh, that's cool. Um, so I asked, what's his, what's his name? So I could look at the videos. 
curmudgeon piper and i started watching his videos and through doug that's how i found out this community is countrywide worldwide uh, community and um i just saw how much fun he was having doing it and checked out your channel and a few others briar blues and um that's how i through doug that's how i found found all you guys now how about uh, making videos what what convinced you to do that uh wasn't really sure if i was going to or not but like i said i just saw uh how much doug was enjoying it and just i figured do one video see what happens and um was overwhelmed by the response from everyone uh, everybody's very welcoming and very very nice people yeah now i'm i know you covered this on one of your videos but for for any of my viewers who haven't seen it tell us about your channel name all right well um my channel name is glum chum piper um the reason behind that is i guess back a few years i i didn't have the happiest uh personality or demeanor and so a couple of friends of mine who i worked with gave me the name nickname eeyore and uh so that stuck and i wanted a channel name that was kind of unique to me that i knew didn't sound like anybody else's name or and so i thought i thought of that nickname and i like what do you think of when you think of eeyore he's always gloomy so he's glum and the next word that just popped into my head was chum i was like oh that's got a nice ring to it a little so, rhyme. yeah and uh went with it stuck with it thought about changing it but i guess a week or two into it that's how everybody knew me so just stuck with it well i like it it's definitely definitely unique um for those of you watching in case you're interested he's starting to do some live streams they're not uh scheduled yet so you'll need to go subscribe to him and hit that bell icon so that you get notification whenever he happens to to pop up live uh, if I'm not mistaken, you've um, you've dragged Jen, your girlfriend, into a couple of those, or at least one of them. Um, yeah, yeah, she did one with me, um, and she is possibly going to do a few more with me in the future. Oh, uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. With the YTPC, you you mentioned everybody being so welcoming. What um. What is your favorite thing about it? What uh, what keeps you hanging around, watching and making videos? Uh, the community, the fellowship. <clears throat> um, and I've said this before on a few video, a couple videos. Um, part of the reason of me joining, the main reason was to possibly make new friends. And I've met some wonderful people and I've done just that. Yeah, it really is. It, it's a fantastic community. Um, I, when you first see it, uh, you, you might be tempted to think that there's something artificial about it, but there really isn't. There's just a lot of genuinely nice guys. Mm -hmm. Yes, what you see is what you get with everybody. So we've done quite a bit of talking about pipes. Outside of pipes, uh, what do you like to do? What are your hobbies? What makes you tick? Well, uh, I'm into music. I sing uh, in the church worship team, and I attempt to sing bass. I used to run sound for a local quartet for a couple of years, and uh, also tried joining another group on the bass position. And I've always loved Southern gospel music, the four-part harmonies and the 
high tenors and the extreme low basses. And uh, actually, one of my favorite bass singers is Wade, uh, Bass Piper. And uh, he, he's just, he's a very talented individual. Yes, he is. I know he shared, uh, early on, he shared a one of the videos of him singing with his quartet. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that man's got some basement. <laughs> he does. I think the lowest I can sing is a low A. Um, I can sing a low C most days, but Wade is able to sing an octave below that. Yeah. And I, I don't know how he does it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He is something else that, that certainly is. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm glad you clarified there for the, for our listeners that you're talking Southern gospel, not uh, barbershop. Um, yeah. There, there is a difference. Uh, it's a pretty good blend. I am enjoying this today. Well, that will just about wrap it up for us today. Technical difficulties and all. I'm hoping to get this recorded and and uh, edited b before um, they cut me off again. Um, and uh, and I, for those of you watching, uh, this is actually the second time we've been through all of this. Um, I'm I'm a bit of an idiot and managed to throw away the folder that the video was in last time. So uh, hopefully this time I don't make the same mistake. As we, uh, as we sign out here, Matthew, do you have any parting words for the YTPC? Yeah. Um, thanks for welcoming me into the community. Y'all are a sweet bunch of folks, and I'm enjoying interacting with y'all. And I hope to be doing this a while. And uh, yeah, y'all's yeah. Y'all, good people. Well, I, for one, am certainly glad that you joined uh, and, and started making content because I have enjoyed seeing you online and, and getting to meet you in person. So, Thank folks, you. with that, I'll tell you the same thing I tell you every day. Like something you like. Check out his channel. The link will be down below. Enjoy your afternoon.